Mm -hmm. Hello, darling star shines. Christina here. Welcome to today's lunchtime chat. Today, we are talking about uh, the light, going into the light after you die. What's the difference or what's going on? Do you go into the light? All this stuff, because there's a lot of controversy about the false light and stuff. So we'll be talking about that. And secondly, we have, uh, um, what do you mean that it's just an experience? I feel very passionate about my mission here on this planet. And there is a bit of a, um, kind of like a, like a, like you're failing to do your duties if, if you are just having an experience and it's not a big deal to you. Uh, and then lastly, we have uh, protection and shielding, old paradigm versus new. So welcome everybody to today's lunchtime chats. Hi, Julia, nice to see you. Hi, Serge. And let me see if I can scroll up. Oh, I'm so sorry, I missed the people in the beginning. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the lunchtime chats, darling. We have a lot of things to talk about today. All right, it will let me scroll down though, so I can say hi to Andy and Hodai. Welcome, guys. All right, so I have my handy dandy drawings here with me to my visual aids to help me talk about these topics. Um, I'm going to talk about the um, <clears throat> first, I'm going to talk about the protection and shielding, old paradigm versus new. Um, a while back in another lunchtime chat, I did a thing where I kind of talked about how as multidimensional, we have a lot of uh, difficulty with language because there's like we, we have a, a term that we use that really feels like it fits the abstract concept that we're trying to convey. And then we start using that word and then the word goes into the collective and then it kind of like takes on a life of its own and it comes back at you with a whole nother meaning. <laughs> that wasn't exactly the one that you, uh, you know, were trying to describe with, with you know, in the beginning. So, um, so there, there's a lot of languaging going on here in, um, with expressing, ideas on this level and that some of it might seem a bit contradictory but when it in general when we're speaking about protection and shielding we're, we're, we are referring to something that is like cocooning over you something that's keeping you safe something that is keeping you in a particular kind of um uh well, feeling protected, right? It could be a protection from a being that you're friends with. It could be protection from a mountain. It could be a protection from the elementals. It could be protection from the light being, from light. It could be all different ways. And actually, all of you guys here, because all of you here are very skilled, everybody in here, I would love for you to put into the chat something, a methodology or something that you have used regularly in the old paradigm as a means of protection or shielding. I would love to hear from you guys. So, so you brave souls out there that, you know, <laughs> let, let us know. Um, let me know because uh, this is a really big deal because what we don't realize is that using shields and protections actually um, limits our ability to proceed. It actually cap captures our awareness in a particular thing and we can't get out of it. And so, so, um, so there's a so there's an old paradigm understanding of what this is and then there's a new paradigm understanding and that's that's the hair i want to split here with this conversation welcome linda welcome carol nice to see you darling hey robert nice to see you all right so because i know i've i i think i've beat the 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 shield don't need to shield thing a uh, horse long enough i don't need <laughs> the horse is dead we don't need to keep going on that this is more of a different way of looking at what protection is and, um, and the difference perhaps between what we would have done 10 years ago versus what we do now to hold the integrity of our energy, the integrity of our systems, okay? Keep scrolling down. Hi, Andy, welcome, welcome. Okay, so I have Andy chimes in. He says, stone and pendants. Yes, there's many here, I'm sure have used that or still do, yes. So stones and pendants are, it's like if they hold a particular frequency and then when you have it in your field, you start resonating with that frequency and it has an effect on your field. So, so um, we can agree with that kind of thing. And then there's actually spirits and consciousness that are in these stone, we call them stone people. And um, it's a very different from a human kind of consciousness and and, and you can actually develop a relationship with the consciousness of stone. Like um, 
uh, way back when, I used to have a medicine bundle, and each of the medicine bundles had a kuya, a healing stone that was programmed over, not just through the lineage that I that I belong to, but also all of my own healing journeys were programmed into these things, into the kuya. And what the kuya did was it started to create a... Um, uh, uh, it had a galactic presence and it was reflecting back to me the relationship of these energies um, to the galactic like this. So, so I could actually in, um, interact with that energy in such a way where I can put cocoons around me or I can make myself invisible or I can do this or I can do that. So, so there's lots of dimensions in which we can work with with stones. All right, Ginger says, in the old I used a reflective suit and now nothing. All right, so that's Ginger. Cool, a reflective suit. Gosh, I imagine like um, uh, like a late, you know, that latex, <laughs> latex suit is what I imagine when you say that splurge, you know, but one that glows. All right, Jillian says, I put my halo down. I am pure expression of light. I am pure expansion of light. Okay, so halo, I guess I would connect that with like that eighth chakra that's right here, that golden sun. You just kind of open it and surround yourself with it. That's a really, that's a really popular means. I know this one too. Hi, Laura. Welcome, welcome. Um, the, the other really great thing about that is that golden energy, that frequency has the ability to um, dissolve heavy energy densities and stuff like this. So, so it's a, it's like a double whammy when you use that because it's, <laughs> you know, because it can, because um, it mulches up the dense energy that is within it that because it's a moving living uh, system of light a consciousness like this so that's really great too okay so so what we need to get down to is um, <clears throat> one I need to dive deeper into why it it restricts your ability your awarenesses okay so all these are good methods right these all work we like them you know um, oh, I have one more chime in here. Um, Hodai says, I used to just put a bubble around myself. Now I work with the grid and ley line to create some over my entire house and yard. Energetic. Ah, uh, yes. Actually, I think I've experienced that over your house and your yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then uh, Serge says, um, shield of light that I program and it's blue white or gold yes those are all wonderful 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 frequencies um benevolence lets benevolence in stops the negative and i send light okay that's a good that's a good loving um intention with all that it feels really nice search i'm going to keep scrolling down because everybody's chiming in uh-oh my chimer's not chiming hold on you guys, I have had crazy electronic issues. I'm like actually very fortunate my computer is even working. <laughs> um, okay, Ginger says, now expand inner light. I don't feel the need to protect anymore. I, yeah, I'm with you. There's a lot of people that are in that camp. Um, but there's also a lot of folks that are kind of like in between or, you know, sense that this is, there's something to this, but really don't know how to go forward with it, you know. A dome, she meant dome. Yes, yes, yes. And Kitty, welcome, 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 welcome. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. My, my mouse won't work one more i'm going to check in which is one more and then I'll, I'll go on with this thought all right hodai morning yes welcome linda welcome okay good to see you okay la 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 okay all right there we go sorry about that we're back so what i want to say about this um how uh when we get comfortable in that um way or if we're that's like our default when that's our our default way it um it can create our, the, it can create a restriction to the expansion of our awarenesses beyond belief systems, subconscious belief systems, and and those that are in the akasha and beyond. And uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've talked about the dimensions. There's nine dimensions that are hardwired into the human bio, into the human experience and human bio suit. We perceive multidimensionally on all um, data sets from our bio suit. So, bio suit into our awareness of each of those levels, okay? The black hole being the ninth dimension, the black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and the core of the Earth being the first dimension. And the um, and uh, the the fourth dimension is what we would call linear time, collective consciousness, and then the fifth dimension is the Akasha, the perception of the soul's journey. And then you have the blueprint level, which is the 60, so on and so forth. Now, each of these dimensions are mentioned up here, and I use this model a lot, core of the Earth, Telluric realm, this is that 2D, the, the atoms and molecular um, exchanges, the language, the consciousness, and then how that comes together to create cells, and the cells come together to create tissues. It's like the entire 
physical realm is built on the 2D reality. And then we have our 3D plane, our collective consciousness plane, that 4D thing. Now notice how in this canopy, we have all these higher frequencies filtering through the 4D, right? And let me take it over here. This is the same kind of thing, but this is just a different way of looking at the same kind of reality, the same kind of engagement. Say 9D is out here and 4D is right here. Let's just, just put some labels on it. Now our belief systems cultivated in our human experience collectively and individually reside in this field, this, this 4D field, this concept of who we think we are as a person born into a family, we have an identity, we walk through the world, we have our stories, our, our happy stories, our wounding stories, our defining stories, so on and so forth, okay? And then all of that is informed and informing of the collective that's around you. Now, when something comes in, or let me step back for a second, the veils are lifting, 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 lifting. So there's more available to us perceptually than ever before because these veils of density and blindness have lifted, 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 lifted. So now what's happening is that we are faced with realizing all of a sudden that we've been holding on to a particular reality um, and, and it's the only, the only reason why it's there is because we're holding on to it. That's, that's the result of these veils lifting. It's like these other forces that be that, were, that created them and kept them in place are falling away. And now we're left with the responsibility of the act of us, the part of us that's con actively contributing into that, that false reality. Okay. And this is, this is where the, the shielding thing would come in. So everything on the inside is informed, is held and informed by the outside shell. So the Milky Way galaxy, holds all of us star beings inside of her, yeah? So, and we can take it to the solar ring. The solar ring, our sun, holds all of us in its heliosphere. And then you have the core, the earth, then the earth holds all of us within her magnetosphere, right? So we, it's all these nesting dolls, nesting dolls, nesting dolls, and each nesting doll is held in a consciousness. It's held with an awareness. Now, those of us who have been on this path for a while, we understand that by our, our, the space we hold influences the quality of the space, right? We've learned this. We, we've um, walked this through either as a healer or in ceremony or whatever. We understand that it's very important how the kind of space that's being held. So uh, the each space is being held, and then we're down here. Say we're, we're here on planet Earth. Here's the sun, okay, and our collective field. So there's ideas, thought forms that create and manifest through the Milky Way galaxy. So we have these, these waveforms coming from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. We've had tribes define nine of them that are organizing forces for our reality. Now, some, so those, that particular, those nine organizing forces are the ones that come from this outer shell and can travel and inform all the way, all the way, all the way in to the inner shell. I, I know this is getting, I'm doing my best. It's really abstract what I'm trying to say. <laughs> So, so now if you notice these lines, so this is a thought form directly from the being, the conscious being of the Milky Way galaxy that's actually weaving its way through the realities. Its awareness is unfurling through the dimensional realities and coming right into our realm, okay? And, and that's, our, that's the 90, that's the, 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 um, the Milky Way galaxy consciousness that's inside here, right? Now, if you notice a lot of thought forms, actually don't even make it through many realms. A lot of these thought forms kind of stay up here in the angelic realm, or they, they might just hang out here in the, um, in the Akashic realm, in the 5D field, okay? And some, and, and some thought forms come, you know, might originate in the 5D field and they work their way through here. And then this is a two-way street. So all of our frequencies that go out this way, our awareness is the unfurrow from our little individuation point that we are comes out like this and it can re and it can reach right back to the Milky Way galaxy. And once you make that connection, you have now awoke to the galactic mind. You have now awoke to infinite compassion and, uh, and all the qualities that are associated with, um, well, with, with the galactic mind, what we would qualify as Kuan Yin frequencies, the endless river of compassion. So, so it's a two way street. Now, here's the thing about belief systems and, and, blind, and, and creating really strong shields that hold and don't move. 
Permeability also uh, it, uh, falls into this category. And it's only because, uh, now I'll get to that in a minute. So if you notice these lines that are in here, this is you in the center. And now your awareness will unfurrow, unfurrow, unfurrow out further, right? Except a lot of our awarenesses don't go past this collective field. They don't go past good, bad, right, or wrong. A lot of our awarenesses cannot cross the threshold past polarity. We cannot process information we, we well because of the systems and the shielding and, and all these structures because of these systems are being in place we our our awareness can't go past other can't go past the idea of this is not me we can't go past the idea of this is good that is right right so it's strong and then it, it will become subtle until eventually it'll start to melt away but when you are on this journey and the shielding thing is coming up, what we have to realize is that we're shielding because we're trying to protect ourselves from other, <laughs> you see? And so that intention is what throws it off. It's not the act or the, or the method itself, it's the attention behind why we are doing it. And this is old paradigm. Now coming into the new paradigm, what it looks like is, uh, and it's, and it's not really the word protection. Instead, I would call it holding integrity. Holding integrity, that means that you are showing up and holding a frequency within your field and you're not willing to compromise that in any way. That means you're not willing to leave, uh, go out, you know, because a lot of people leave their bodies. You're not willing to leave your body and you're not pushing your energy forward onto people either. You're staying home right here all the time. You're staying within the rhythms of your body. Now the rhythms is your breathing, the rhythms is your heartbeat, the, the, all the subtle pulses. There's many, many pulses within the body, right? So, I mean, there's 70 something organs alone. Each organ has its own pulse. So then, and then your lymphatic system has a pulse and your cranial sacral fluid has a pulse, la, 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 la. It's a big long list. So when you are, when your energy stays inside of your pulses, your pulses are the predominant frequency in your body and in your field and in your subconscious like this. And there's nothing can get you this way because you're within these rhythms. Now, if when you're not within these rhythms, that means you're not, you're not aware of what's happening in the body. You're really aware in thoughts and you're up here and you're either, and you're qualifying things as this is good, this is wrong, um, or this is bad. I like this. I don't like that. They did that and I'm doing this. <laughs> You see, you're in that dance. <laughs> but when you're in your rhythms, it's like, a, it's like a rhythm meeting a rhythm. And then you start recognizing that another person's rhythm might not harmonize with yours, but it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? It's like um, I recently spent some time with um, uh, some folks that were pretty, you know, they were pretty toxic. One of them was really toxic. The other ones were very sensitive people. But um, and and. What happened was, is that it was impossible to have a conversation that wasn't polarized with this individual. If it wasn't about something was wrong or something was good, then they could not have a conversation <laughs> with you, you know? And, and, and everything was um, really high alert. There's a lot of adrenals going on. So they were like out of their body all the time, like 24 seven, that was their default. And it's really difficult to be around that a, a lot. So, so, you know, everybody else was getting affected because it's the sympathetic resonance. And sympathetic resonance, is, that's the next piece I'm going to. So when there's negativity coming, negativity coming towards you, you feel it coming into your field Rather than holding on to it and or not holding on to it, making contact with it and deciding wrong, right, and pushing it out, it's more of acknowledging it for what it is. Acknowledge what that is. What what is this? This is a this is a bad taste in my mouth. This is a feeling of not feeling good. Or you know what I mean? You just kind of like leave it like that. And once you once you acknowledge it, a lot of times it'll just lose its charge and it's not trying to push its way into your field anymore. A lot of that stuff comes into our field, especially around people who are asleep because they want us to understand. They want us to see them. We want, they want us to believe them. They want us to, you know what I mean? They have a lot of wants and needs that they're not being transparent about and they're pushing, 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 pushing their energy. One of the biggest things is like me, like me, like me, like me, <laughs> right? And that's what we feel like we would be shielded from a lot of the time. Now, of course there is the, you know, the really bitter negative people, of course, but, um, 
but I mean, but you, you, let me know if you guys can feel what I'm saying, because this is an interesting uh, uh, subtlety when it comes to when we self uh, to self restriction. So the more we shield, the more we believe in the separation, the more energy we're putting into um, safe, not safe. Now, now don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's not about one thing being true and another thing not being true. It's not about that. It's about having all of this in your awareness at play at the same time. Because sometimes it's really important that you're aware that there's shit around you, right? <laughs> really important that you're, you know, you're not in la-la land and, and walking around completely oblivious. But at the same time, you need to do, and you need to do what you need to do in order to feel safe and secure in your body. So it, so that's, that's where the shielding game is still kind of a part of people's lives is that they're working with getting in their body. And that's a methodology that, that satiates some subconscious systems, belief systems and the nervous system and stuff so they can feel safe in the body. But there is a point in time where, you, you need to let we let that go and we just let our presence be the radiance our presence be the power piece and our pulses are the the, prop, the pulses that are echoing through our bio suit and into our field are multi-dimensional they are what that's what protects us so to speak that's what holds the integrity of our consciousness our intention in the here and now in the moment that's what holds the integrity together if that makes sense the way I'm saying it. All right, Hody says, or wait, let me see if I can scroll up yet. All right, sorry, my scroll up isn't happening. Sorry, guys. Um, Hody says something. She says, I have a crystal grid set up through the entire house linked to the stone people in the yard. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, that's like just enhancing biofields. And biofields is an awesome thing to play with. You can do a lot with biofields. You can, you can even mitigate electronic... Um, electronic pollution, the EMF fields, the um, you know the 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 Wi-Fi and all that other stuff. You can mitigate a lot of these artificial frequencies that that um, have an impact on the body with biofields, just like she's talking about. You can do it with the grids of the land and with stone people, but you can also do it with plants. You can do it with um, you can do it with well, pretty much anything that anything um, that you can find. Really, it could be. <laughs> it can, I mean. What can, is there something that it can't be? Let me think. Yeah, it can't be like a vegetable or something that will decay. Like if you're thinking physical, it can't be anything that decays. <laughs> but um, in general, um, when you're working with the living consciousness of the land, the living consciousness of the elements, the living consciousness of the beings all around you, then you guys create this harmonic biofield that where everything feeds each other, everything is synergized you know, by each other, and you have this beautiful, beautiful resonance. And it's very, very, very soothing for the body, for the mind, for the spirit to be in that kind of field. So I would call that, you know, more new paradigm holding integrity. Um, and by the way, uh, this this August, I've, I mentioned this on the group. I want to mention it with you guys because I'm talking about biofields here. Um, this August, I'm going to be at the Cosmic Reset. And another gentleman that's also presenting there, his name's Fernando. I posted a thing in the group. He has spent the last, like, decades, since 2012, researching um, and exploring ways to create, to build a house that heals the body, uh, to build a house that heals the body, the mind, and, and spirit like this. Um, so I'm super fascinated to, to watch his, I'm so excited to even get a chance to meet him and check out his presentation. But he'll be with me at the Cosmic Reset in August. And there's a really cool sale going on if you guys are um, at, at remotely curious of checking it out. The price of admission includes the lodging and stuff like this. So, so it's a really awesome deal. It's like a two for one or something like this. And you can um, bring a friend and have a great time and learn about biofields and all the other wonderful things that we're exploring there. All right. Andy says, me is we. Why would I want to hurt myself? Once I understood that, I, it helped me understand why the universe would want to help me. Realize that I don't need to be scared of myself and protect myself. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is understanding a lot of the young ones have naturally. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, my, my scroller thing's not happening again. All right, I'll, I'll get away from that and go back to... I'll, I'm really sorry about the electronic difficulties. 
I have been posting things on Facebook and nothing, there's certain times when nothing will post. I will, I'm having like this absolutely insane, I've never had such issues with electronics as I do this time around. <laughs> it's, it's really quite interesting. I mean, I had my phone where I picked up my phone and it died in my hand. It was fully charged. I picked it up and it just died. <laughs> you know, like what the heck? So I'm, I'm laughing a lot about it now because what, what else can I do, right? <laughs> So I just go with it. All right. So, so yeah, that's a good point. So, so the, the layers of reality, right? So when you're here, when you're in that 4D field, it's very real where it feels like it's separate or you're being attacked. It feels very real. This is the truth. But when you go outside, you start to take things less personally and you start to understand yourself, see yourself, have memories of yourself in a soul's journey where this particular unfoldment is one of a gazillion unfoldments that you're having, right? And it's not that anything's unimportant because, I mean, you're having it for a reason. It's, it's, it's significant, right? But, um, but, once it, but it's not until you bust out of that polarity field can you start processing these other, these other data sets into your awareness and, uh, or accepting, I should say, these data sets into your awareness. That's a better way to say it. So, so after that, that soul's journey, you wake up to that light body thing. And then you understand that you're like this breath breathing through the galaxy and this, this, and this unfoldment that you're experiencing has been completely mapped out. <laughs> it's like an organizing force to your reality has, um, you know, is in this level of yourself, of who you are. And then beyond that is your, your soul song and your ability your relationship to your soul song grows over time. And when you first hear your soul song or sense your soul song, it might be like a, a tone or two like this. And then, um, and then more and as you go further on your journey, it'll all of a sudden change and have, so there's something more rich in it somehow. And it's because you've expanded your awareness and grew in your relationship to that level of your consciousness like this, right? So, and that's really what this is all about. It's really not about right or wrong. Like, you know, you're doing it wrong. No, it's not like that at all. It's about recognizing when you're, when you're in your own way. <laughs> it's recognizing when you got something going on that's keeping you back. Because, you know, how many, I, mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've totally tripped my own stuff up and shot myself in the foot. I don't, you know, it's just, and I wished I had someone to say something to me about, oh, well, you're just not uh, accepting this other thing. <laughs> And if someone said that to me, I swear, I would have, I, I really, I swear I would have listened, right? <laughs> okay, let's check with my scrolly thing and see if it works. Yay, it works. Okay, Jillian's down. Makes sense exactly. Kitty says, I made it through through time in my oldest, um, right, very strange relationship. I, I said I lobe her. I think that's love her, but didn't talk or listen to her. I did not allow her to cause react to cause reaction first time in a long time. I was grateful and, and manifested peace between her and me from my space, space of peace. Awesome. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So this is when you connect with awarenesses and you don't react. Yes. That's a very, that's a really very evolved thing to do. Now, when you open up to all these lenses of who you are and you're not saying, and you're allowing all those levels of your presence to be a part of your here and now presence, right? All these from the Milky Way galaxy, your galactic mind, all the way down the core of the earth, you're allowing it to be present in your, in your moment, not just when you're meditating, but when you're in the moment like this, you, it's really powerful. What she's saying is really powerful. You can just touch things with your awareness. And they will start to shift it. And if, as long as you're not reacting to anything that you're opening your awareness to, you're just aware of it, it starts waking up to itself and unraveling. And this is really what I consider is um, the new paradigm medicine is that we just touch things with our awareness. And because the veils are the, as thin as they are, things just are waking up. They're just unwinding from their, from their distortion, from their delusions and from their, from the densities, the polarities and all that. So, so let me um, start weaving this into the, um, to the just experience thing, because this made me laugh <laughs> because there is, you know, um, so we have all these levels of who we are and the lens that we perceive all these subtle levels, the lens of, of our bodies that of our systems that we, um, are, the data sets we can most easily accept after a certain point when you do enough of your shadow work is being able to feel with the emotional body, being able to connect and use the awareness of your emotional body. And that is how you tune into all these higher levels. Okay. And it, it's very easy this way. Now, what happens is, is that emotions, 
It is truly a lot like water. When there's a lot of, you know, swimming and impact going on, it's like in the emotional body, it's like all you can really do is hear the water splashing around, splashing around, splashing around. You can't really notice the other things going on. But when you're very still in your emotional body, when everything's like a still lake, it's this perfect reflection of everything that's around it from the cosmos to any dimension that you're looking into, any interdimensional plane that you're engaging with, okay? So when you are having a reaction, even if it's a positive reaction, if you're having emotional charge, when you have an emotional charge, like a, right? It's my mission, right? I'm here to boo. <laughs> you know how we declare our purpose, right? And it's powerful. It's absolutely powerful. And you need to have that level of power to stand up to a lot of these frequencies. This is true. Absolutely true. But, and <laughs> when that, that's only one of a few of the layers of your, of your experience, there's other layers here that the personality of who you think you are is not aware of. You're not aware of until you are. And once you become aware of these outer levels, once you start waking up beyond the galactic plane and start going, you know, into these other realms, that is the place where you realize that everything that's going on here, all the dramas going unfolding in the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy and beyond, those are all just experiences. <laughs> it's that you don't, you don't, it's like there's no relation to the density or the intensity at that level. At that level, it's a fascinating, absolutely beyond belief, fascinating thing to be in the experience. <laughs> it's okay. So, so it's not that you don't have the passion for your purpose because you absolutely do. You have to have that. And it's also out from this perspective. It's a, it's an awesome, simple, simply an awesome experience, right? Like that. So, and so it, the, the only time when this becomes a problem is when we're not in recognition of the emotional charge we have with it. You know, it's like when we have a real strong emotional charge with something that is, that's skewing the lens, that's splashing in the water. That's not stillness. And, and, and that's really the piece we have to be aware of when we are engaging with another human or, or whatever we're engaging with, well, especially interdimensionals and extra dimensional creatures, when we're engaging with them, if we're coming at them with this mission thing, you know, remember every thought and, and emotion and all these other um, dimensions are very powerful forces, right? So, so, so if you're like, you know, pushy like that with your energy, you're not, you're not a very friendly, you're not a very friendly neighbor. Let's put it that way. You're not a nice neighbor to have interdimensionally and there's and only certain, you know, only a certain crowd is going to be um, interested in being friends with you, <laughs> you know, versus if, if you're cult, you know, if you're up to, awoke to these other levels and you're cultivating the understanding of, of the space you hold, the quality of it and being still like this then you're gonna attract a whole nother level of species to you that wanna have contact. And this is why I think the frog people don't talk with a lot of people. I hear them all the time. And I, they're like always with the Sasquatch. I rarely see Sasquatch without frog people with them. And I know lots and lots of Sasquatch experiencers have never even, have never even imagined anything like a frog person. And I couldn't understand why that was so, because they work so closely together. And then I realized, ah, now I understand why it's so, because they're, they're very, 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 very sensitive beings. And if you have a sharp um, emotional reaction to anything, it's like poking them with a, with a thorn, you know, it's, it's not a pleasant experience for them. So they're very, very, very um, uh, selective. They're, they're very careful about who they allow to know that they exist. All right, let's see. Here we go. I'm going to see if I can scroll again. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay, I'm scrolling now. Would love tips, resources for recreating biofields. Oh, to deflect the EMFs. Okay, so you can arrange plants in ratio. You can um, arrange crystals in ratios. When I say ratios, it could be in, in geometries with particular intentions like feminine geometry, um, which is usually odd number angles or odd number point stars um, versus masculine geometry. Well, anything with straight lines, masculine, but um, in general, I'm talking about the, the whole, uh, the odd and the evens. So you can do um, like have like uh, 
a, a Venus frequency, you can have an Earth frequency, and each of them have like a geometry that's associated with them. And you can take the points, main points of that geometry and put a plant there or stones there or whatever. And then and what Hodai is doing is a really great idea is like get in touch with the ley lines and what's in the, under your house, any water lines, any fire lines, anything like that, and connect it to that. And, and make friends with the telluric beings and ask them to you know, to hang out and have their frequency here because you really value their, their their life form and so on and so forth like this. And then you'll have like a little community of telluric beings that are, you know, happy little munchkins um, in the, in the, under the earth and um, influencing the energy lines. So you can do stuff like that. Um, there is a tradition called Master Builders where, and there's books written about proper measure according to your latitude. So you can put things in, in, in around your house that are a particular measure apart from each other and that will resonate. Um, what's another biofield technique? Um, geometry is a very popular way in aligning it with the ley lines. Um, I don't know if you guys in the group, if any of you guys have any ideas um, to add, please do. Um, I'm sure Jillian will be appreciative and she'll probably try it and then we can have her feed and tell us how it went. <laughs> So we can have a little case study here. Um, Hodai says, yes, I understand the shield. I have to design, oh, okay. I, the, the, I, the shield I have are designed for EMF protection and specific galactic energies that needed to be blocked, so to speak. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Galact yes, and that is because there are beings on the galactic plane that are not for the same agenda that we are on. Okay, and I don't talk about that a lot because that freaks people out because w once you get past, you know, archetypes, a lot of folks um, use, kind of have to rely on belief systems and religion and, and stuff like this to engage with beings. But there's a lot of agendas out there and you learn oh, as you open your awareness and learn not to react and respond and, and understand that it's all about your relationship, not about good or bad, right or wrong. Um, once you... Um, you know, start really applying that to your way of living, you start to um, realize these other levels. Like, here's the story that Almin told me. I love this story, actually. So Almin is a talk tech master. She has a lot of stuff online. Really crazy out there. I love her, but she's really crazy out there, okay? And, I mean, things that she told me 10 years ago, I finally understand now. That's... <laughs> that's how... That's where Almin's at. And uh, she told a story about about Merlin, she was under, after, I think it was after she, um, or so she did the Toltec master stuff and then, I mean, she's always that, right? But uh, she started working with other masters and they were teaching her about immortality and stuff like this. And one of them was Merlin. And Merlin uh, was a trusted teacher of, teacher of hers for a long, long time. And then she started realizing these identities that we're putting names on are really putting names on beings, non-human beings that have existences in these different planes, right? And so she, you know, was waking up to all that. And then she woke up to one day that Merlin was actually lying to her. Merlin, uh, the teachings that he was giving her were actually keeping her contained. And so she, and, you know, keeping, limiting her ability of her awareness to go beyond a certain plane. And when she woke up to that, she was like, what? And then when she asked him about that, he was just like, well, it's just because you weren't ready. And she didn't like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, what do you mean I'm not ready? You know, doing. <laughs> And she, in that, and once she woke up to that, she then expanded explosively into other levels of awareness. And I think somewhere around that time is when she started to be able to speak any language in the cosmos, speak and understand any language in the cosmos, and translate. And that includes all the languages of this planet. So, she, I mean, really, it's phenomenal to be around this woman. The energy is really off, off the hook. And she will. She'll translate anything that, that, you know, well, usually she'll offer. And she can translate it immediately. I hope that story was helpful. All right, Andy says, it was. It has also helped to understand that everything is love, no matter how we have judged it. Yeah, so that's going back to polarity. Once you get, once you get past the good, bad, right, or wrong, then you start to, under, you start to see this webbing that is weaving everything together, and, and everything is expanding in an excitement. <laughs> you know, everything is like so excited to expand and move and grow and experience, you know, and everything is, is like, the, is on that level. Um, now, so, and here's a, here's something that's been a constant conversation between um, one of the, one of my teachers and I, is that, you know, 
So yes, everything is love. Every That is what's behind all the molecules, that's behind all life, and that's what weaves us all together in, in this. Um, but, and our individuation, our interferences, as we call it, are a real thing. That's a real thing you need to be aware of. And, uh, and I used to kind of be more, I had rose colored glasses a lot. I always thought the best of people and, and that burned me a lot. And it was because I was ignoring the, I was ignoring the interference that is purposely being getting, you know, people are purposely involved with. It's like they, they, they're, they're getting pleasure out of that level of their identity. And, and I wasn't appreciating that. I was thinking they would just see the truth. <laughs> and that's not really how it works. People will follow their pleasure always more than truth, usually, unless you're a truth seeker, right? Like us. And in, in this case, we will, we want the scathing truth. Please give it to me. Give me the scathing. Don't hold back at all. We want it. <laughs> so we can really know and trust that we're being, our eyes are open and we're being clear, clear, transparent and in truth all the way. You know, that that's more of, you know, our kinds of sentiment, but most humans, you know, they, they really want to follow the pleasure of who they think they are. What is the name of that Taltic master? Almin, A-L, L, mine, A-L-M-I-N-E, Almine. Wow, I can spell. All right. Um, <clears throat> oh my gosh, time is going by. So that was the, so finishing off the whole just the experience thing, it's that yes, you need your passion and you also need this other, this other level of perspective. So you can have, a, so you're very, um, so you don't engage and you can recognize any levels of reaction that you're having that could be um, limiting the, the data sets, limiting the relationship that, that's trying to, that's evolving with you. You know what I mean? With these other, with this other relationship, with these con levels of consciousness, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh boy. I'm having a hard time today. All right. I love you guys. You're very patient with me. <laughs> all right. Getting to uh, talk about the light. Yes, yes, yes. So all of this, right, prepares us to talk about going into the light. Let's first talk about what the light is, right? What is the light? Every religion has its story. The two that I resonate the most with and is maybe is not the reality for me in the, anymore, but that's only because I'm, I've been accelerated in my, in my, you know, in my relationship to reality. But in the beginning of all this, I really resonated with the story of the Bardos, the, the teaching of the Buddhists and the story of the Bardos. And that is when you die, you, you leave your body and you need to navigate a labyrinth, so to speak, full of wax figures that are playing out a particular drama of your life okay and it's usually someone a drama that that holds regret or not forgiveness or something like this and it's only after you navigate through the bardos does the real light appear and in the real light you transcend you you walk through and you transcend the incarnational cycle of this planet that one always resonated with me and the Egyptian Book of the Dead is a very similar thing, except they say it's more about the lightness of your heart um, on the scale being light as a feather. So, so in the Christian talk, uh, it's, you know, your family comes for you and the light of heaven opens and you walk into the light. And then you have a, like a lot of the near-death experiencers give their report and they all also report a sense of a light at the end of a tunnel. <clears throat> So everybody agrees that there's a light, but how it comes and what it is and how to get there, that's where the disagreement is, <laughs> you know? So, so um, when I awoke to these other levels beyond, you know, past the light, um, it was rather shocking for me, but um, I totally get it now. I totally get it now. It's really about freedom and it's about the veils have lifted so much. We are now no longer bound to any karmic, karmic cycle. We are no longer, those of us who die consciously, we are no longer locked in an incarnational cycle on this planet that we cannot leave, okay? Because that's an experience for a lot, of, a lot of beings, that they have been incarnating here, accruing karma, that you have to have the right circumstances in a life to, to achieve perfect no karma in order to transcend. And, and this isn't the case anymore. Those that want to transcend can. Now, there's lots of dimensions and realities on this planet. So there's a lot of beings that uh, home, what they would call home, is not the light that we would recognize. And, and it's really important to recognize their, their frequency and, 
and understand that we don't force them into our ideas of the light. We send, we get feel into where their home is and then we open the door to their home and let that happen. It's the same thing for us when we have a loved one, a beloved one dying. When a beloved one is dying, and that's a magical moment when you're present for that, you can tune in to what is their home, not the personality of who they think they are, but their soul song, their home. And, and because those veils are lifted in the way that they are, you can tune in, feel, sense, taste, know that soul song. And when you do that, you are opening the doorway. You are helping them open the door. You know, you're helping with the opening of the doorway. So it's clear for them because you're a human. They're leaving a human experience. So it's clear for them where home is like this. The natives have a wonderful practice of singing, singing the spirit's home. And, they, and then they would have their own idea of what home is. Now, <clears throat> there, I'm gonna say, yes, I'm going to say this out loud. I can't believe that. All right, all right. With, with the onset of religions that are control systems and control powers, and this includes all religions, I would put Buddhism in there too. Because Buddhism really, yeah, there's, there's distortions in that put in there on purpose, control systems. Um, and what happens is, is that the 4D field is created with belief systems. And when you feed a belief system, life force energy, it gets stronger, it gets stronger, it gets stronger, it's stronger, okay? This is how hell was actually invented. It was invented by a writer, right, by Dante's Inferno, and the church ran with it, and they started using it to manipulate people into doing things because they don't want to go to hell, and people really believed that, and then you, got, then you have all these priests and ministers damning people to hell and doing all these stuff with these energies. They, in doing that, they actually created a hell realm that souls got stuck in and are stuck in. Okay, that that's how that happened. Well, the same thing has happened with the afterlife. <laughs> the same thing has happened. Now you can do what I was talking about about hearing the soul tone and and being in you know in that altered state and helping them remembering home. You can do that only because the veils have been lifted completely like that. But in the old days, you would have to have more. There's more that would have to go on. So. For you personally, it's important for you to figure out what feels right, right? Because it's not about what anybody else thinks or what you think another person's journey is. It, that, that's completely relevant. Your, your process is yours and yours alone. And it's important for us to reflect and sit back inside of ourselves and feel in your core light where is home, what is home. When you're done with this body, when when this when this bio suit expires, what, what's home? Where do you where do you want to go? You know. And once you know that, once you meditate on that, and you know that in your core light, you've connected your awareness to that in the on a core level like that. You're never gonna forget it. You're gonna you're gonna remember this moment. You're gonna remember the moment when you die, and there's gonna be no confusion about where you go because of you knowing now, <laughs> you understand what I mean? Tuning in and listening to it and taking the time to understand this level now. No, don't listen to what anybody else says. It's what feels right inside of you. That is your path because not everybody wants to go home. Some people want to keep going on the exhalation adventure and that's totally their prerogative to do so. That's what makes this, this planet so amazing. You know, you get to do whatever the heck you want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now there's a lot of people here that are wanting to keep some beautiful frequencies on this planet and keep it as a, um, you know, as this miraculous playground for divine beings in biosuit. I'm kind of, I'm on the, in that camp too. So there's an agenda on these, all these multidimensional levels that you're walking. So where you go will probably have a lot to do with that. <laughs> you know, it may be going home and it may not. It's all, it's all, it's a free for all really. But in the old days, what would happen is that if you had a belief system, especially in the Christian work, um, if you had a belief system of going to heaven, you wouldn't actually go all the way, all the way to the upper dimensions. You would stay within the um the atmosphere of the planet you know what i mean and and because you're in this canopy there's the light of the all that is there's the light of the angels right there's the light of the soul of the soul essence but it's not the all the way going home where you have a 100 percent choice of where you're going when you're up in the atmosphere you're in inertia when you go to the sun or anywhere beyond that it's choice 
all the way. It's choice. Hopefully that's helpful. I don't want to freak people out because when I when I tell them about the whole um, the, you know the Christian what, what's been done with the dying process, it kind of it's kind of a tough pill to swallow sometimes. Jillian says, "Oh, Jillian, I don't know if this will help, but the crystal grid I have is based off a of mother crystal, which is a goddess charge bridge. So when I add to the grid, I sage the newbie and tune it in with nine chimes of the bell. Okay, so this, this is her." Um, tuning tuning method here intense connection to the mother earth to the mother of course they have to want to be included in the grid so maybe it's just energy and intention yeah yes it is energy and intention but and all that other stuff if it brings joy and it, and it includes more beings in the in the um you know what i mean in the ceremony or in the act then why not? You know what I mean? It, it's, it's all personal choice and beings love to be involved. Other beings, plant, special, plant realm, especially, they love to have relationships with humans and to be used in their ceremonies and stuff like this. It's really a joy for those beings to be a part of us, our lives in that way. Julian curious, how would explain the experience of light streaming down through the crown for a few minutes? Light streaming down from the crown. You mean there's a sense of light coming from outside the body and streaming into the crown like this? Um, well, that could be lots of things. So we have this, this, these little streams of awareness, right? Streams of awareness. Here's the thing, and I, I've talked about this a few times, but uh, I think maybe this is it's hard to get. Your personality is on a ride, <laughs> for real. And yeah, we can we can. Um, do things that make us feel like we're doing things right and have control of things we could totally do that and that's what most humans are doing but really you're just along for the ride you're strapped to the roller coaster and you're on the ride you, you know what i mean so it's more about freedom in that where do you find the freedom in that like the ego will feel trapped and confused and helpless in that but your true nature is like woohoo <laughs> Right. So it's like it's aligning that personality to be aligned with that un uncontrollable level of self. So it's a wild, fun, crazy ride versus when you're trying to control it, control it, control it. It turns into, a, a, you know, a, well, a shadow, a shadow work journey. Right. So if you feel and this is where I'm going with that, if you feel you need uh, a biofield I'm just using this as an example. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not trying to pick on anybody or anybody or anything. Um, if you feel like you need a biofield and it's really a truth that you need that biofield on all these levels of who you are, it, that the, the journey to achieving that will unfold before you, you know, it's like you just take a step towards it and the, and the reality is going to meet you with the next thing that you need. It's, it's like magic, really. That's how it is. If it's important, if it's not important, then, you know, it, it's just it's just a loop that you're going to play. That's all. In these days, with the way the energy is on this planet, I, I'm I'm particularly aware of wasting energy. So I'm, I do my I'm doing my best to to um, not you know be have a lot of energy drains going on. So so for me, that's important to only need to take action on things that I, that's that's important, right? Um, not my personality important, but important on these other levels. So so. So that's how it goes. If you want something and you're fighting tooth and nail and it's confusing and it's this and it's that, you know, it could be that it's just not important. <laughs> that's frustrating. All right. Andy says, totally on point. Thanks so much. You help me feel less alone in my beliefs. Aw, thank you, Andy. Well, you have a whole crowd of people here that are, we are all, I'm preaching to the choir, really. All you guys are pretty much on the, on the same page. Um, Hodai, sa Hodai says, I was kind of horrified when I learned not to send souls to light. I had suggested that to my dad as he passed a year ago. I guess what kind of makes me feel that wasn't a mistake It all right, is that he came to me a week later to say I made it was free, was happy. Oh, that's so beautiful. So he can, so he can be stuck in that place or, and not know it. Okay. Yes, this is true. Most don't know it. That's true. Yeah. You ever see that Robin Williams film? Um, the one where his wife commits suicide and then he dies 
what day, what days will come, what, what something, what dreams will come, something bring. Anyway, it's a story about the afterlife, and that thing that he was in is exactly what what you're what we're talking about here, right? So, and remember, we're infinite, so we have places, we have parts of ourselves everywhere. Most human beings that have been on this planet for more than a lifetime or two have aspects of themselves lost in the underworld, have aspects of, them, of themselves lost in uh, traumatic places of war and in other kinds of um, horrific events. So, so, um, so if a loved one passes and parts of them get stuck somewhere, Yes, it's useful to to find them and help them out, of course, because because it also influence DNA. But um, but I, I guess I'm saying this so we don't feel too alarmed. You know, I've had aspects of way back when I had a lot of um, experiences with Hell Realm stuff. You know, and and no matter what, not all of you is lost because there's only a portion of you that can be held contained in your bio suit. So these are all fragments we're talking about that get lost. And so in these pieces are so we can align ourselves with the truth, not necessarily keep ourselves from, how do I say that? I want to say keep ourselves from being fragmented, but hopefully, hopefully you guys can um, feel what I'm saying here. And I apologize. I'm having like really hard time with words today. Wow. <laughs> it was funny. I was just talking to my husband yesterday and I, I was telling him I was having a really hard time. Um, I felt like that day, I guess it's end today, that I felt I had a very difficult time relating to hum to the human experience. And he kind of laughed at me and was like, you know, that's nice, honey. <laughs> you know, but, you know, here I am and I'm still having problems. Anyway, uh, uh, so yes, what dreams may come. Thank you. That's the name of the movie. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, so Hody, yes. It's good that you say this because you're not saying it to him, his personality. You're saying it to the other part of him that's going to remember right? And here's the other thing that happens when someone dies in that moment of death and it's in a room full of people that are having a big emotional reaction, you're muddying the waters and they can't see clearly your beloved that's leaving, right? They, they, they're like, they're around chaos. And not only that, if anybody in the room with that strong emotional charge is in the place of don't leave me, you are actually going to suck some of that energy of some of that soul essence of your of your loved one into you. You're gonna and you're gonna hold on to it. This is all most most of it's all subconscious, right? So so there's a lot of that kind of stuff. So I mean, there is an art. There there's a there's a whole line of medicine teachings around dying, how to facilitate a death. And, and these are some of the most valuable teachings I personally think exist on this planet because a conscious death. Can can be a big game changer for that soul in where it goes in its next you know in its next um, ev levels of evolution and stuff like this. All right, Hodai says. So these lost fragments, the outcome is any of that have to do with soul contract? It can, yeah, 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 yeah. So when you tune into the ethers around you, okay. So here's the thing. So a life stream. There's life streams that connect us all like a web, right? We have a soul life stream. We also have life streams between the DNA and our and our ancestors. So um, one of the things, like the people that that happen in the that come into the project, what what I have them do sometimes is that we do our ancestor work. And when we do that, there's a time when all the mothers will go out or all the fathers will go out or, you know, all of the certain certain um, levels of consciousness will go out and collect all the lost pieces of grandma or, or you know, Uncle Eddie or, you know what I mean? And we'll kind of like put out a call to make contact with any aspects that are lost and wandering out there. Now, it's important to actually make contact with the part that was lost because sometimes there's other things involved, like a person's emotional attachment. Like if there's like a, 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 a say it was a young child and it was, you know, it, didn't, it was terrified and didn't know what to do. Mom, I can't live without you. That kind of thing. You know, a lot of times mom will just step right in and hang out with child for the rest of that child's life. Right. So, so if it's a strong emotional attachment like that, you have to address the child. You have to address the person that's holding on or else you're not going to be able to scoop those energies back. <laughs> you know, the ones that are really easy to get, the ones that are super easy to get are the ones are, are is essence or, um, you know, a, a loss via trauma or shock. If it was shock, 
you know, a lot of times it's just like the energy went out into the interdimensional, you know, into the interstices, so to speak, and it just never came back. And they're just kind of like hanging out like this. And now we're talking beyond time space. So even if it happened a thousand years ago, it doesn't even matter because that is just perception of our relationship. In energy time, it's just like it's here and all of a sudden it's here. That's how it is in energy time, <laughs> you know, and it's more about sequence at that point. All right, Hodai says, death medicine people really need to be honored. Yes, yes, sweetie. Yes, yes, the death walkers. I, I, I call, well, the tradition I resonate with is the death walkers. Laurel says, what about touching the body at death? I have heard not to touch anywhere but the crown, so the spirit leaves from there. Yes, yes, yes. The dying process is very, very sacred. And uh, there's a lot of layers to how to hold a proper space for, when I say proper, I mean one with integrity for the being that's leaving. Um, it's important that there's not a big emotional charge going on around them. It's important that, you know, that, that the people around them are, are aware. Touching the body while the dying process is happening can do a lot of things. It can create an energy transfer. It can, well... There's so many things now I'm looking at it that can happen. Um, there's also entity transfer that can happen. All right, so you're dying and maybe you're scared when you're dying, right? I mean, as you leave, we're inundated with entities. There's other entities kind of hanging out, right? They're too scared to go where the others are going. And if you touch, they can easily just kind of like, you know, <laughs> zip right, you know, get a, get a leader right onto you. And they'll be hanging out with you now until you're aware, unless you're aware. So um, and when you get into esoteric levels of the death process, that's a whole nother ballpark, man. They are, they are being very specific with what's happening in the dying process because what they do, and this is a beautiful thing that I watched happen, was they, um, they could, those tunnels that I was talking about, when you tune into the tone and, and you can open the tunnel of home for that person, for, the, you know, for them to go home if that's what their desire is and all that, they do that times a thousand. And they actually are directing that soul directly to you know, a particular um, it's like there's a technical piece to it, to a particular thing, because the beings that they're doing, they're tracking them as they come into their incarnational experiences. So like the Rinpoches and certain uh, lamas and, and all this stuff, it's like that being was found, it was crossed over mindfully. So it's like it was the lineage holders, the monks and everything had that spirit, put it someplace specific in the other side realms and, and for it to incarnate where they can come and, and catch it again. <laughs> so it incarnates into its new lifetime and they find that baby and then they call, they finish the cultivation and the kid, they finish the teachings like this. And then that baby grows up with all of its memory of who it's been through all these Rinpoche lifetimes. So those beings, those Rinpoches, those llamas that you're looking at, those are very, very special beings. No one does that anymore. There used to be cults, not cults, but there used to be lineages that would do that, especially in South America, where your initiation is to, um, is you get ceremonially um, nicked in the heart, you die, and then when you come back, you you are born into a, uh, a planned body like this, and then you're right back into the clan again, and, and you go to the next level of your training. That's what mindful dying can do. That's what a purposeful dying process can do for, for consciousness, you know? And of course, those are beings that want to stay here on this planet and do their mission, <laughs> do their work. Oh my gosh, time has just flew by. It's like 103. I didn't even notice. <laughs> All right, darlings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here.